Hi, I'm Jeremy Fisher with Wolfspeed, a Cree company. Today I'm going to be giving you a few quick pointers on how to make sure you have a clean submission for your Mimic design using the AWR PDK. First thing you need to make sure is that your project is properly set up. If you go into the layout options, there are two tabs you need to check over before making any submissions and export. The first thing you need to look under is under the layout tab. The database unit needs to be set to 0.001 microns. This is the database size required by our mask vendor and is what we will be using in order to snap all of your exports to. The second thing you need to make sure of is under the export LPF tab. You need to make sure that subcircuits as instances are checked. This will, this will make sure that any of the P cells, the, the specific structures that are used in order to build your uh, schematic and layout are exported as instances, which means they aren't flattened so that they can be grabbed as entire structures and moved when doing any kind of cleanup work. In order to make sure that you're properly exporting those, if you select cells to export as instances, it'll bring up a window and it'll see a list of all the P cells used within your design. Within this, you want to make sure that any of the non-MLIN or non-transmission line type of cells are checked. For instance, in this case, we have capacitors, an RF pad, slot vias, and FETs. All of the other selections are unselected in order to make sure that transmission lines, junctions, and other trace elements are not exported as instances, but are instead flattened. This will allow us to properly make any adjustments needed in the cleanup phase of your export. So beyond that, there's really two main things that you can do to make sure that you have a good, clean uh, export. The main issue that we run into with submissions is that layouts get submitted off-grid, which means that our requirement is that all um, Manhattan components be on a 0.1 micron grid. In order to make sure you do that, all edges, for instance here, here that are Manhattan, north, south, or east, west, need to be actually on 0.1 micron grid. Typically, this would not seem like it's an issue. Um, you could just draw your items and you could specify them to those lengths. The main problem comes in when you use traces or curved traces. For instance, if we look at this top level output structure, each of these sections is, used, is uh, designed using one of the P cells. In fact, this line and this line are the exact same P cell designed to the same length, but they've been drawn differently. In this case, we can see that we have um, all lines on Manhattan. In this case, we have an angle. This angle isn't by itself a problem, but what happens is when you actually put that angle in, it adjusts the electrical length so that if we were to zoom in to this section down here, we would see that these are actually off grid. The way to check for that, of course, is to go to your verification. So we will go to verify, design rule check, and we'll do a quick check just for on-grid elements. So in order to do that, make sure all of your Boolean operations are activated because this will merge required layers. And then we're just going to go do a quick check for metal one. We run our DRC and we see that we have a number of on-grid violations. If we go back and we look at that, we can see that, yes, we have some off-grid errors. We don't require that rounded corners be on-grid because they're going to be written to a database that's much smaller than the 0.1. It's the 0.001 micron. But we also see that there are a number of places, for instance, where we have these angles, where things have gotten off-grid. You can see in this line, in this curved trace, because the curved um, aspects of these radius actually do the same thing and pull the ends off grid. And once you've, once you've actually pulled the end off here grid, anything connected to that during the snap also gets pulled off grid. So there's a couple ways you can avoid this. The first is to, when you're doing things, again, make sure you're using M trace as opposed to the curved trace as much as possible. The reason for that is when you look at this, the way they actually uh, the way the length of the laid out segment is actually determined is 
by the Manhattan links between these vertices, these corner vertices. As long as you're snapping to grid with this, then the endpoints will always end up being on grid, even as you change the lengths. The next thing you can do is make sure that you avoid um, using not only the curves, but angles as much as possible. So if we were to go back to the original output, we also have these curves. They do the same thing. If you have to use this, there are a few things that you can do in order to make sure that you're on grid. The first is, instead of using variables in your output, for instance, if we look at the schematic for this particular, um, this particular circuit, in order to make sure that I have equal segments on opposite sides of this line of symmetry and that I'm maintaining symmetry, I've used variables. The problem with using variables is that if you make an adjustment in the layout, you can't then ex or import the changes back into the schematic uh, because the, the back annotation tries to go into a variable and it won't allow that. So in order to do that, you need to make sure that you're breaking up your output into um, sub-circuits and using hierarchy. You can then, in the circuit, instead of using variables directly input the lengths, and that'll allow you to make those changes. The other thing you can do is to, once you've set it up so that you have hierarchy and that you aren't using those variables, it'll allow you to actually import those lengths back in. So if we select any of these lines and we look at shape properties, we can then use stretch to fit. What stretch to fit is, if you select that on your layout tab, within your layout option, typically the hierarchy for when you're doing a snap is to start at port one and make any adjustments on port two. Well, if you do that for a trace, it's going to pull this in to whatever length it needs to be. If you have angles or curves in this line, that may end up forcing this endpoint to be off grid. Instead, if you use stretch to fit, it will just adjust the actual electrical length of this back towards whatever this cell is. So if you make sure that the attached cell on this end of the a trace line is on grid, by definition, the rest of the line will be on grid also once you use the snap to grid. So how do you make sure that these are online? So in this case, I've actually changed both of these lines to be um, snap to grid or stretch to fit, excuse me. And then we have a script under scripts, Cree, snap cells to grid, that goes through and makes sure all cells are snapped. Now, when it's making sure they're snapped, again, it's looking at the port one location. So if all you had were the port one location and you did not have this stretch to fit, these would not get snapped properly and you'd still end up with a gap here or an offset on the um, output end. But as long as these are all set to stretch to fit, then when you do this, you shouldn't have any issues and all of the edges should be on grid. So if we look at this, we go back and we use our verification again, design rule check. We will set this up one more time. Again, selecting all our Booleans to make sure that the layers are properly merged. And we will run our M1, run DRC. Now you'll see that it still shows point on grid uh, violations, but if we look at the layout, they're all in the corners. There will be possibly, because of some of the way the trace elements get drawn, a couple edges where you'll see, this is a good indicator that you need to go and check this. This does not necessarily mean that it is actually a violation. So if we zoom in to one of these edges, as far as you can possibly zoom, and we put our cursor on the edge, so down here what we're gonna be looking for is, in this case, the Y element. We wanna make sure that we're on grid there. If we go up here, we can see that it's actually 112.000 microns, so that is actually on grid, which is what we're looking for. So there you go. There's a few uh, pointers on how to make sure that your submission is on grid.
and is in the format that we can use to properly make masks. Good luck.